Welcome to another episode of The Wrong End of the Snake with your hosts, the Sultans of Sound, the Admirals of Audio, Pooch and Tater. Follow us at all your favorite social media outlets at Wrong End of the Snake. Watch the live stream on YouTube, but if you want to interact, make sure you subscribe to the Zoom webcast and ask questions of the guests and these dynamic hosts as the show unfolds before your very eyes. And without further ado, here are your hosts, Pooch and Tater! Hey everybody, welcome to The Wrong End of the Snake. It's a webcast about audio, touring, and the relationships we have built between our road families. Tater and I have had an 18-year relationship on the wrong end of the snake with bands like Ted Nugent, Kid Rock, Slash, Stone Temple Pilots, Prophets of Rage, Iron Maiden, and most notably, 10 years together with Linkin Park. My co-host, Kevin Tater McCarthy, is a world-class monitor engineer with over 30 years in the business. I'm very proud to call him my friend. He has nine Top Dog Monitor Engineer of the Year Awards and two Parnelli Monitor Engineer of the Year Awards. I'm Ken Van Druden, AKA Pooch. I'm a front house engineer with three decades in the music industry. I'm a three-time Grammy nominated recording engineer. I have eight Top Dog Front House Engineer of the Year Awards, and I am also a winner of the Parnelli Front House Engineer of the Year Award. Let's do a little housekeeping. Uh, Please use the chat window of the Zoom app to communicate amongst yourselves. If you are streaming from our YouTube channel and you want to be able to ask questions of our guests, register to be on the Zoom call for future episodes. Links to register are in all of our social media. If you have any questions for our guests, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom app. We will answer as many questions as possible during the hour and then answer any leftover questions in our Q&A overtime episode. Look for that to be uploaded to our YouTube channel in a few days. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to visit our social media. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook is at wrong end of the snake. Tater, why don't you tell us about our distinguished guest this week? Well, if you tuned in today to see the longest serving speaker of the Canadian House, Guy Charbonneau, you've tuned into the wrong program. We have Guy Charbonneau from La Mobile. For more than 40 years, Guy has recorded and mixed projects for an exceptionally wide range of talent with the music, television, and motion picture industry. His passion for recording live music remains unparalleled and fuels his drive for capturing a clear, pristine, authentic sound every time. And his approach to attention and definitely detail, the guy is very meticulous. It has already allowed him to remain one of pro audios for most sound engineers on the scene today. And for a long time, the guy has more awards, acolytes, done more records than you can imagine. Let's welcome Guy Charbonneau. On location, doing a gig. Can you believe it? Doing a gig. (laughs) Hi, Guy. How are you? I hope I hope you hear me. We can hear you. Yes. As you can see, we're not we're not we're not in a normal setting. I'm in the middle of the street because that's the only place I could get internet in this on stage here. Oh my goodness! And we're preparing for a for a recording today. That's when you could see the mobile is getting behind me now. It's getting slowly setting up. I have to get careful that I don't get killed by a car, <laughs> another truck. <laughs> Please but don't get killed ahead. on our and show. <laughs> we, we're, waiting for, we're waiting for for the truck. When I get power, I'm going to go by and get an extension with plugging my phone. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for uh, for coming. You know, we we had That's planned this a, a long time ago. We had planned this a long time ago, and uh, you called me last week and told me that you had a gig. And I said, "Well, if you have time, let's just do it anyway." And we thank oh, you for your time. Yeah, man. Um, so happy that you are uh, able to, uh, you know, slowly get get some work back going. It's it's inspiring to the rest of us. It means that maybe we'll be working soon too. 
Uh, so, so, uh, that, that's, that's awesome. Um, if you, if you would, let's kind of start at the beginning and, and let's just talk about how you got in this business. I, I think I remember that you owned a hi-fi stereo store in Montreal. Is that kind of your, your entry into the business? Is that the Filtronic? That's the way you hear me, correct? Because yes. I keep cutting out. I have to I, I could not move. I could lose the scene. <laughs> <laughs> you need to hold a yes, coat hanger up. And, uh... <laughs> Reco recording, do, selling audio file stuff. And I started to do recording for a radio station. And it turned out better than their guy. I have no knowledge of recording at that time. Just knowledge to connect stuff together. And I realized when I start to recording music, this is it. This is what I want to do. Show the store and that's it do 50 show the first year carrying equipment and after 50 i say i like car i'm gonna put a studio in the truck i build the first mobile the small one and then i build a one behind me if you could see in 77 and then rebuild with a diesel in 1980 uh and that's it's the same truck and with the same console the neve console from original Wow. And that's a that's a eighty fifty eight right in there, and you have extra eighty fifty eight modules on the side, oh, if yeah. I remember I, I, properly. I start with I start with twenty eight channel. Now we have hundred twenty four preamps in the truck with all a wow. lot more Neve preamp on the side of the the rack. If people could go on the website, themobile.com, and the first picture you see is the inside of the truck. You click on it and you do a tour of the truck around the truck and in the truck, and you can zoom in and stuff like that. That's yeah, got to be yeah. these days one of the biggest collection of 8058 in the world right now, isn't it? Together, uh, it's uh, it's a rare console, but it's you know, we like it, <laughs> keep it, never gonna get out of the truck, it's part of the sound. But we did trick to it, we, we combined fiber now because we no longer park by it's funny here, we park very close to the stage, we might pass the analog snake. That's it's an hybrid truck, could be analog, could be digital. But we built a trick system four or five years ago. We remember first time me and you, Pooch, would give me a Matty feet. I didn't like it, but I take it. <laughs> <laughs> but Pooch could give good Matty feet. Sometimes they're not always good. I but can't take credit for that. It was uh, it was Tater that dialed up those mic priests, but yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, no, it was good. At least the game was not moving in the middle of the song. Yeah. <laughs> And that and that uh, that is a, an occurrence that happens all the time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. My knowledge of Maddie at that time was very limited because we just built a system. I'm like, Maddie, what is that? You know, and I did have a, a, a system to to root a router, and it was not working friendly till I come back at the office, get out and get like a better router, a good one by direct out, you know, and that's a fab fabulous. And now I, I could accept any feed, but mostly we like to see an analog feed uh, to the system, to the stage, and it allowed us to tweak the gain exactly for recording. It might not be quite the same gain than you need for your PA, you know, for front of house. Yeah, that's right. Um, and, you know, to take advantage of the way that your uh, whole system in your console sounds with your outboard gear, you know, that's the best way is to have transformer isolated away from from yeah. us. You know, I still record the old analog way because it uh, doesn't mean when we used to have 24 track machine, 23 track machine, you combine your 10 and put the drum in four tracks, maybe five, depending bass mic bass guitar on the same track you know uh, uh you know guitar acoustic electric same track gotta make commitments know? yeah because gotta make commitments make commitment yeah. Yeah. but basically what you do you eq to make it sound the best and the new eq are so musical i still yeah. do same thing iq compressed but now they go all to the pro tool individual track let's see your gain is slightly different than the input because you don't combine 10 track to four track you know and, and but I still use compressor, you know, whatever, like I used to do analog. And my idea is the monitoring section of the console, you mix, you listen. I start with the fader at zero, equal. And my, my, I kind of pre mix in Pro Tool. That's when you take a session, you bring it up, and you put your fader, and basically you have the mix. Obviously, during the concert, I might 
bring a solo up, bring it back in place. So I could talk, the vocal may be a little louder than, you know, you make a mix. Then. And I sure. like sometimes my monitor mix has to sound good and has to have, you know, a little room connected properly to it. And when I, I did the recording, and even other engineer who mixed on my project said, we mix, mix, mix. We go and play your two track. Shit, we have to redo because we lost the feel of the show. They, they clean too much. Sometimes you mix it. Myself, I did that so many times. Clean the track, clean, clean. And then you, something happened. I like to EQ also right away because it's the vibe of the show. It's important. That's where I'm to capture and, and I'm not there to create new sound. I right. want to get what the artist does. That's me. For me, it is trap rush as close as you could do. You don't do stupid EQ, obviously, then you cannot you never get back. You know, even in digital console, if I work another truck, I ask, could I have the EQ? Uh, then I could send that to Pro 2. Like that, I could take my session, be in my knee. And it's what I heard on the other track. I don't have yeah, the right. card to recall my zip plug in, or and I don't have to have plug in. I have if, if we mix, and I need to fix something or I need an effect. That's fantastic for me. But the plug in, I turn around and show people. You see all if you see the truck inside, you see all the effects rack, the good old harmonizer, the good old. Yeah whatever you want you know if the truck was built more as a studio on wheel or like a control room then it was more built as a remote truck we did mostly at the beginning it was record we did record we did very rare did tv once in a while an hbo show then you're combined with tv i have a little black and white camera to see the stage <laughs> you know <laughs> that's why i think i learned to capture the sound and get the vibe feel the show and it allowed me to do any kind of music. People ask me if I like music. And I said, no, I like car. And they look at me, what? How do you record music? I said, if I like music, I would like maybe an artist more one than another one. And I give always the example. I do Bucelli for a week and three days after Kanye West. What happened if I like, maybe I hate both. Maybe I like both. Maybe I like one. No, I go and my brain go to their music. But I have to admit, I love music. I have to play music. I, I get emotional on some song. That's what music should do, you know, for me. Of course. I'm in, the, I'm in the track sometimes. Don't look at me if a song gets me or my foot tap or my face is like, oh, my God, this is a cool song, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and I like the artists who I give themselves to on stage. That's fantastic. No matter the style of music. It's so good when you see the connect with the audience. It's not only look at me, I'm pretty, you know, but sometimes they look at you pretty. You have to capture what the look and pretty does, you know, <laughs> and I, I miss show when, you know, this year, last year, we have oh, nothing. I know. You know, I start the year, couple of show, March, they pull the carpet out for, and, and I have one show at the end in November, Foo Fighter at the Roxy, and it was to raise money for musicians who don't make any money. And I give my time, I make a deal on the truck, and it was give money to my crew, to my guy could make a little money. And this one, at least it's a project with, hey, it's cool. <laughs> but I like, I record, it's funny, the last show of last year, except the Foo Fighter, it was Maroon 5, and that's the band I'm doing today and finish with them start with them again like we never did we just that, like again. like it never happened <laughs> <laughs> i think that's going to happen to a lot of people i think uh you know we finished with somebody and now you know we we're supposed back. to start back. with them yeah but you I'm know it, it, it might it might be like we never left it's just a different location <laughs> you know yes. i've got a quick question about the truck I, I, somebody sent in and it's like, you know, you, you've had the truck around since the late 70s. What about the mechanical side of the truck, the engine side? How, how many miles? What's the maintenance? I was uh, looking today. I have about 300,000 miles in the truck. Oh, okay. Not wow. bad. It's not, it's not a lot for diesel, no. but I did no. change the engine once. We oh, came back from a Kenny Chesney recording in, uh, in t Tennessee. was in, not Nashville. I couldn't remember. It was Tennessee. And my when we came, my driver said, I, they all looks funny. We pulled the dipstick. It was looked like chocolate milk. Ah, that's wrong. It was basically <laughs> the, the sleeve of one of the cylinder leaking water, antifreeze. 
That's mm -hmm. when I called my mechanic and I said, hey, let's put a new engine, new. And they came with a forklift at my place. I was mixing candy in the truck by the time. Oh my goodness. Oh, here he comes. I have a picture I was working in my office at that time. So the engine now has probably 100,000 miles or less, maybe. No. On, the, on the new engine, yeah. And the new engine. Okay. The, yeah. Except the truck is no longer exactly a California truck because of the regulation and stuff like that. That's when you have to, to figure out a little bit, uh, get a, a special mileage, like read, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, but I see. We, For the California we, emissions. We, we find, yeah. because I don't go on the road as much, I don't even use my truck if I... The last longer distance was cross road in 2019 in Dallas. Anything past Dallas or kind, depending, and also a question of cost for the client. You cannot bring a truck and do a one night show and be stupid. It costs three times the price of moving the truck. So I called one of my friendly truck back east, Mix Mobile, Music Mix Mobile, digital truck. They have two guys, Pete and, and Corey, are fantastic. Yeah. And, and we steal them. If I was really, really busy all the time, like in <laughs> 90 or whatever, you know. And I did, did, we, you know, people said it's not the need. No, but they, we run at 96K. They used to never do that. They modified to get the preamp to work 96K. And I record and I, rec I record properly. And I know how to turn the knob. That's basically what I tried to do the best and capture what is there. And it's fun. It's fun for me. It's great. I don't have to wash the truck when I come back at the office. <laughs> <laughs> because Where did, let's back up a little bit. You now, it may look very clean. Huh? Oh, it there it is. Dusty. Yeah, it does look very clean. It, be, it get dusty a little bit. And guess yeah. what? On Thursday, the first thing in the morning, me stupid, dionized water, wash the truck. <sighs> Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you got to You got to do the hard parts uh, if, along for, with for the fun people, stuff. I, I find something to do during the, the coronavirus. Obviously, I modify a couple of pieces of equipment. My fly pack system, we modify to make Maddie as well than analog, very similar than the truck could be hybrid, you know. But one of the things I did during the, 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 the time, you know, I said I used Q-tip and I cleaned the tread of the tire of the truck. I run out of Q-tip a couple of times, but man, I, get, no, I have a new box now. When I come back next week, I'm going to Q-tip the tire of the truck. Yeah. Oh, Whoop, my a, God. A, That's a, meticulous. A in, then I may have to move. I hope I don't lose you. He doesn't want to move. Okay. Know. It's the only place I could talk. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, hey, let's back up a little bit because I want to know where you learned um, how to be a recording engineer. Was it, did you have a mentor or did you look up to somebody? Where did you first Never learn how to I record? I to record. Just, just. The when I used to have the i5 store, every piece of equipment I used to sell, I test them, make them, listen to music. And it's something in me, I don't know how to play a note. If you want to say, give play a note, I, and, or I kill you, I'm dead. <laughs> but it's something when I sit at my console, the way I layer the sound, I don't put it like that. I can't layer. It's like a painting. It's weird. And it's just something I... I, I uh, Gain structure, it becomes maybe working a little bit with uh, uh, Nick Blagono at the studio in Morrow Night. Nick, uh, we did stuff and he learned. Uh, I, sure you have your mask I do, I'm doing a Zoom now. Uh, I can't put my mask for now. The, the internet doesn't work if I go back. I would love to. I want to see car. Let's see if I lose. You see, let's do a Zoom. Nope, we, still got you. Yeah, we, we still got you. Yeah, we still got you. Oh, if it works, yeah, we good. I'm a little bit more. Uh, yeah, yeah. I assume yeah. we're done. We're gonna do. <laughs> well, That's yes. Working on the sound stage. Working. It's the it's the new world of COVID, man. It's crazy they out there. Working with the new rules. Yeah. They, pick, they are vaccinated, and they still. Now we need, you know, I prove I'm, but I still temperature. You know, I know. You know, double mask <laughs> me. You don't want me like that now. <laughs> Anyway, I, I kind of like through working also with, uh, uh, but the first recording of the radio station for the 50 show, I didn't have, it was French people from major artists from France. 
and we used to go in the in, from Montreal to a Quebec City recording at the. But I learned to do a little DI box. Uh, maybe Jean Luc Louradour, one of the my tech or the tech at the studio, was I build this little box. Jean Luc give me the resistance. You have to put inside to do a little splitter. It was show with that time sixteen input, twenty four input, and I. I start, when I started to record, I used to save tape deck from the iFi store. I used to sell Crown tape deck, Revox tape deck, but it didn't take long till I go to a little convention in Montreal and I see this guy of Studer, Bruno of Strasser. And he was like showing, he's showing a Studer A80 for, I think it was two track and yes. taken apart and it's basically Revox, but the pro version. And I said, I have to have one. This is a one. beautiful <laughs> machine. Yes. <laughs> oh, and then I bought a four track. I could make my crowd on separate track or maybe the vocal if it's too complicated, you know. And yeah. I bought a four track. And I, I have a Tascam console at that time uh, uh, during that year. And microphone, keep more and more mic. I, I think I told you about the ex my knowledge of microphone. When the musical director came, asked to buy microphone at my store. He threw me a, a U67 and we're not going to use these old mic. I have these new bear mic that I sold. Actually, they were a great mic. So we never used the U67. We used the, <laughs> used the, probably the first or few recording they did with the radio engineer was a U67 in the middle of front of the band. That doesn't really work well, even if it's a fantastic mic. You know, Maybe if you do one guitar by himself, it's fine. Yeah. Sure. That's mean we were to mix the two track and I, I don't know, something, I just have a sense probably something in my gene because I, my dad, my, my real dad who passed away before I was born, he was a musician, he repaired radio and he was a photographer. My, my oldest son is a photographer because of probably gene from him. Me, I got, Jan, my other son who has worked a lot with me, who was an engineer, who has so maybe get my gene or get from my dad, you know, whatever. And car, my stepdad did have a garage. That's why I end up to love car like crazy because I have more boat in my mouth than lollipop, you know. But I, I, it's when I build the first truck with, uh, oh, obviously when I have these two studer, I went to Toronto and Bruno took me to Toronto Sound. Uh, yeah, Toronto Sound was Terry Brown, Rush producer. And I saw a Neve console and I saw the Studer 80 at that time. I need that. So I, I got to have that. <laughs> 80 to do multi track, but I didn't have the money for 24 track. He sold me after 16, one electronic per month, you know. And then I had the task, I had a set of amplifier, gain amplifier to match to play stand, you know, it was not professional. Level. That mean we make this, but that didn't stay long. I bought a little Neef, a 24 channel, and I wired that behind uh, the hotel in Toronto. And uh, I was prepared my wiring before. And the next day I did with Terry Brown, George at, at Mo, uh, Mo Kaufman at George, a little restaurant, we were a little club. That was with Terry. That was a, that, you learn a lot if you work with a guy like Terry. And Nick Blagono, I did a lot of Deep Purple. We talk about gain structure and, and other engineer in Montreal too, who was the good French Canadian engineer for the major artists. That's where we, we you, you do things, you learn all the time. I still learn, you know, I always all the said time. you have yeah. an idiot engineer. You look at oh, this guy, oh, but you try to, I, I don't have guy really sitting at the console for the mess. I don't know how many years I have guest engineer. We work as more as a team. I prepare everything I do. And then he could play with the monitor or I could, uh, if he did, get, give me instead that, that limiter, give me another limiter. I prefer to have that. Fine. I have no problem. When I get my sound, I, I could be flexible. But I learned working with an engineer, but I learned also working sometime with a guy who said, oh my guy, where he did he learn this uh, skill? But he do one thing. Hmm, I like that. You know, you, you <laughs> I'm going to steal, steal it, that from that guy. Remember, yeah, that's what the nice yeah. thing to do. You know, maybe that was his strength. But in doing live show, if you're always in a studio, with they panic about this the leakage and leakage could be your friends. <laughs> you know, I kind of miss in a sense the side fill and the wedge. 
because I feel sometimes the in-ear monitor make people play more as individual instead. It's more me, more, more instead to play as a band. Now a bad, bad stage with really loud monitor will be not good. As It's never, you have to take what is make the artist the most comfortable. If they're very comfortable, they'll play better. Simple as it is. Yes, of course, of course. I, I remember when you were talking, uh, one of your, uh, uh, about ah. testing with Linker Park, many vocal mic. I said, oh, no, don't do that. You know, it's like, because I know somebody in Montreal who was testing a bunch of mic. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, this one sounds good. You know, uh, the artist may sound terrible for him. What you are doing is to test your mic. When I heard you, yeah, we do a full day of one mic. Yeah. And then the next day we try maybe another one we think will be good. Then you could, oh, this one make me feel better. The artist, the sound start from the artist. And I hope people who understand that, not from your console, not from the plugin, not from whatever miracle you're going to do. It has to start there. And if they are good, it make your life much easier to record it. Me and you, we were talking about show. We do the rehearsal. It's like, oh my God, that's going to be and the show start. And it's great. Or sometimes you have great, great rehearsal and the show start. It just, what happened? What like, happened? <laughs> all the fader off or whatever it is. You know. and but you make a really good point that that all of this is about making your artists comfortable. And if you can oh. make them comfortable, you'll get a result out of them yeah. that all the, the, you know, the choices that you've made as far as gear goes don't matter, you know? Um, so uh, that, that's really, really interesting. Um, I was going to ask, what about letting the mix sit for a minute? Instead of diving, you, 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 the band is obviously playing different at the start of the show from when you did the rehearsal or the sound check. And instead of just turning every knob on the board, just giving it a second, letting it breathe for a minute. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, the first song sometime, mainly if you do a festival, it could be rough, you know. That's when you have maybe a long check and you kind of know where to be to start to, obviously. Even if you didn't work with the art. For me, if I could get at least, okay, because sometimes in festival you don't have any even rehearsal when I used to do Coachella, but at least before the, the starting of the show, hit the kick drum a little bit. Bang, bang, bang. That's all I need. I don't need five minutes of kick drum, snare. And of, sometimes, sometimes the front of house do it, and you follow that, you know? And, and you start with that, and you, it's not going to be a miles away, you know? And, and maybe the first song might not be the best, but it may not be because necessarily you didn't have all the proper level. Maybe the band are very not comfortable yet till suddenly you feel them become as one, you know? And you tweak maybe a little bit and that song, I'm gonna bring a little bit more mid on that snare, you know? But I, I have a basic setup. I always preset my console before kick, snare, you know, vocal. It's always preset. My limiter, compressor, uh, are always patch. And I don't go crazy. It's, I, I, it's sort of a, uh, an EQ to clean the track. And damn, you could realize quickly if you need to touch it or not, you know. But these EQ normally are, are very close. I will remix and people will remix. Unless you want a special effects, you don't have to play a lot with changing your, because if you change a little bit the leakage, you'll change maybe a little bit the, the total of the tone will change a little bit, you know, and stuff like that. But we try, if, if you capture the best way, the cleanest possible, it'll be much easier when it's time for mixing. You know. Yeah, for sure. So I know you don't, you prefer music mixing. Um, and I know that you do some broadcast mixing. So when 5.1 showed up, <laughs> how did that, how, how did you feel about it? Because what's happening in live sound is now we're going, some people are going to immersive audio and there's all these speakers around. And I'm just curious how that transition for you was. The, the, the biggest issue sometime I have, because we obviously, I look at the recording of the 80. Love a boy, Vancouver. Okay, they were not known that we took the truck to Paul Dean's house, cut on the second floor, disconnect the, the kitchen stove, plug the truck instead, it was 220 in Canada. <laughs> perfect. perfect. <laughs> but you have maybe two or four crowd mic originally. Two in the middle, two wide up front of the stage, pair of shotgun, pair of guards here. 
and then six mic, put another one, put another pair at the front of house, you know, and, and more to get the room. So you, this vary and people, how are you going to do your crowd? I said, I have to check the room. I have to smell the room before I decide I'm in a crowd mic. We did Garth Brook a lot in the past couple of years where we have 25 crowd mic because he played for wow. 80,000 people in the big, uh, you know, and it was too many mic, but it was just, let's put them because when you mix, you'll be able to sell uh, because it's hard to do odds. Odd side too, it's always much more difficult, you know. That's me. We the, in the room is normally six, uh, two, four, six, eight mic in general. In, in the, okay. And then one of the thing I did, it's crazy. The, 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 the vocal mic seems to always have more crowd, crowd in the vocal mic. The reflection. It the does, face. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I put a pair of 57 Big hat on, on stage, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, mixing with your hat doesn't sound the same, man. Eh? I have to remove my hat. If I have a oh, hat, yeah. and, you know, I took it off for this, but if I remove my hat, this, I can in the truck, I have no hat. But I, I put this 57 uh, up front, and this is more for close audience, but it's something about the combination of the, the Omni, uh, not Omni, but Cardiaid and, you know, shotgun, and not too long shotgun because shotgun doesn't like low hand, you know. And, and obviously, it's sometimes the pH two or four, depending of the room. You know, that's the general six, eight, ten mic max. You know, that's in normal. If I will do eventually a streaming in, in you know, where you'll be a, a recording where you'll be for immersive sound or you know, uh, then we have to have two teams. I'll do my normal, make them mic sounds good for like a few hours in the area. The other thing too, when I mix live, I always said, if you ask somebody, I was mixing no doubt, where do you want to be or Gwen? Where do you want to be? I want to be by the stage. I want to look at Gwen, you know, or close to the stage. That's I mean, I always try to make my mix sound live, but not washy. It has to be, you fast, when you surround, you feel close. That's I have a pair. I have uh, two little speakers in the back of the, in the truck. I have monitoring and surround and I, I basically, my surround, when you go to mastering, the, you know, they have very, very little EQ to do, first of all. And they just basically bring the level to the required, me, I record still analog, nice, man, zero dB, no, not, you know, nice tight mix. And then because it goes on a CD, you want to raise the level. That's basically what they do but they don't very, very, very little to try to change the tone. And this, they always said, this is, this is just mastering, you know? And I give them the choice to select which level D or C, D you know, is the proper. You don't want to pin that, they have no room. Take it down is difficult, bring it up, it's easy. Uh, that's, now, surround is fun. I never start to mix and surround because it's too much fun sometimes. <laughs> I, I do, when I mix, I, I take, I take the, each channel, I create stem, mixing a little bit like TV uh, film does, a drum stem, a guitar stem, another set of guitar, it's always stereo stem at least, you know, and the drum I may do four track. I like to keep snare and, and kick on a separate track than the rest. It's basically oh, wow, okay. like I go my old four track, you know, and from the, the Pro Tool. And I make these stem and I have my my crowd separate. And then we have to, we cheat. We bring more crowd, bring more crowd, mainly to, we find good crowd who could, uh, who could expand stuff to. You know. That's always, that's, that's always my difficult thing whenever I'm asked to mix something is finding clean crowd. Like where do you find the all clean crowd that you can enhance some of that it, with? It, you could not bring, it's they have some crowd over the year and I keep like that that lover boy in Vancouver. It was the crowd was crazy, crazy. Right. And they would didn't look at their phone. They were watching the show. <laughs> but you obviously you could not use during the music, but in between it was nuts. But you cannot make that. It has to be when you mix, you have to put that realist the realist to the show. I can have another crowd in Grand Theater of Quebec where it's like very polite you cannot use that either <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> right. it's just I, I did show what is no doubt for example where you have a little moment of quietness i bring this little 
kind of people talking before the show. So low, maybe 40 dB down, but it's just weird your brain, how your brain connects to it, you know? It's an AI car. I built it because of the virus. We have I built a simulator, car simulator, race simulator. And not really, it doesn't work at all like my car on the track, you know, it's like shit, <laughs> shit. I just, I just, I just. And then I decided to put a butt kicker. Ah, okay? we on the simulator? Yes. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And, and I take a crown lamp that I have, I bridge it in mono and it connect to the subwoofer and feed my butt kicker. Unbelievable what he did. It's like, oh shit. Now, obviously you don't have the G force, but if in your brain, it's, you know, that's mean when you mix your crowd, you have to think a little bit how the brain react. You know, the biggest issue I have too, we talk to the news is the subwoofer. PA today has too many subwoofer. It's too many, it's too loud. And I saw starting people starting their mix, start with sub. And then they had the music. They should do the reverse. They should make the music sound as good as possible and bring some softer. But for a reason, the, maybe the hip hop music has made change that we need a lot of bass. It's too loud and it's not, that's, and this I have to fight that. That's some of the show is really difficult, you know, to, yeah. to fight your crowd. But yeah, you, we find a way. It's, it's interesting. The pleasure of searching. It's interesting to me because we live in a world now where uh, even most consumers have left, right, and a sub in their house. And so yeah. I did not grow up this way, and I know you didn't either. We had stereo, and so I think it's, a, it's an artifact of the sub creeping into consumer audio that but people you, turn that information up. Yeah, but you know, but you know theoretically, if you have small speaker left and right, you need to have a subwoofer to bring the bass Correct. because not directional. Okay, that's me. In, but it it's fine at home. But you see people with surround at home. Where's the mid range? Oh, I don't have room. It's in the cabinet there. And the subwoofer, <laughs> they don't really know. Put it in the corner of the room. It doesn't have to be in the middle or whatever it is. You know. I know. Wait, have twenty-five speaker to do the immerse sound. <laughs> oh know. my goodness! I know it. It'd, it'd be um, crazy. Yeah. Can I ask a question? How many times? Not let's just say the lead singer's vocal mic or a mic like that, but how many times you have to go in and put your own? You don't like the mics that are chosen from the, the band, uh, like you change the kick drum, uh, or do you do that at all? Uh, uh, never. Even never. if I hate the mic, if the same that mic, I use that mic. If, because I, if I was coming in and said, push, or you, you know, what do you use that stupid mic, you know? What, because uh, we're Lee Cage happy. And I was going to give you, it's like me, I'm not going to use a 67, I'm going to use my. <laughs> my bear. No, you can't do that because you're going to change how it feels on stage. And if it doesn't feel right, if the singer doesn't feel right, it won't sing right. It will not be happy. You can't do that. And I trust you guys who does front of house engineer to work with, the, with these artists to know what they love. Now, if we do a, a, a special show where it's not a tour show, a lot of time I will create the in input list and all the mic came from me and I, and, but I, I confirm also with the PA guy. And what do you think? I got to use that on the drum and, 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 and you know, and the vocal, they might tell me, I like to use uh, audio technica, you know, cool, fine. If that's, if you have worked with that artist before, of course we're going to use that. So it's matter of working as a team, not working like, you do a truck. What are you doing here in my thing? I recorded the show too on my portal. It's a team. <laughs> we have four in the in the seventy in the eighty. You are welcome. You come to the gig. You have a place for the truck. They were waiting for you. Uh, we have an input. I always have an input list before anyway. But you know, it was a team thing. It was fun to see your old friend on stage. If I work with you guys, same thing. You know, we talk in advance. You know, of course. Uh, uh, we, uh, my, my show today, they plug the truck now, okay? But my proto session is done. My system been all test and my console is labeled. I may already. have a, I may, uh, yeah, already. I may have a chance. They might come to me or we move, we decide to, okay, I'll, I'll do the chance. But I'm theoretically based on the input they send me. 
I'm ready. And it's easy to do a change if you need to do a change or to add hikes. So you have all of these accolades. You have, you know, 50 zillion platinum records and Emmy, Grammys, you know, all kinds of things because of stuff that you've worked on. This, yeah, but- sh- this show is about relationships and we talk about how relationships are important. And maybe you can speak to a little bit about like, how did you get all of those opportunities? Was it, you know, it has to be more than just word of mouth that you're an amazing engineer. You have to culture those relationships. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, when I started to do recording, I didn't consider me as an engineer. Even with that big truck, I uh, built in, rebuilt in 77. I was not uh, still, obviously with, in 77, when I built the truck, I, 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 I came in New York to do a show for CBC. From there, I called Bruno Strasser and I said, who's the biggest producer? Phil Ramon, Paul Simon, you know? And I said, oh, where's your work? Where you work? He and I said, cool. They have the phone number? Yeah, I called them. So I'm from Montreal. I just did a recording at the, and I like to visit your studio. You're welcome. Drove, I drove the truck. I stood, today, I actually drove the truck. And I, I um, parked the truck up front. What do you have in the truck? I have a pair of Neve and a pair of a, a Neve. And oh, a pair that's of so great. I love they, it. They came in the truck. I have a pair of 800. They didn't have that. They were, I got the first 800. And they just like, I never saw the studio. I left because I have to go now. It would be dark at night. And I want to be in Montreal by that time. So I left. But a couple of weeks or a month after, very closely, Phil called me. His office called me. We want you in Cleveland for post time. Drive the truck to Cleveland. Now, the funniest thing, we use about 100 reel of tape. I don't know if there's 100, but it was a lot. In Canada, we joke, we turn the tape around to use more, tra- to, to be able to use the other side like we used to do on the or to track. Or to track. But I work with their engineer. I work with Phil. And I don't know, that starts something else, you know, the, the project. And before that, after that, I, I did a, a journey project. And when in, in, in Detroit first, and, you know, a couple of places in New York State and in Montreal. And at that time, the truck was built with the new diesel truck, okay, in 79. That was in the 80s. And, and I tried to come back in the state, even if I formed a company in the United States, even if my vacation to be an owner of a company could have worked in the state, I didn't get the little car. And they didn't want me. And Journey and the record company tried to bring the drug. No. I, for one year, I was stuck in Montreal. Lucky I have jazz, CBC, some French artists, Canadian artists. But that was it, you know? And you think the, the virus is tough? That was pretty tough too. At, at 21% of interest for the money I borrowed to build the truck with the big diesel, you know? That's it. Yeah, don't don't get run over. Yeah, not by the mate, <laughs> not by the mate's truck. Yeah. I was just I just okay. saw the mate's truck was you, gonna, gonna run talk. you over <laughs> as you were talking. <laughs> I think we're good here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's amazing. Hey, you know, something I've always wondered, and I've never asked you back in the day when you had the A800, you had two machines in your truck, right? How, yes, you know, because so you, if you were running at 15 ips or 30 ips, you only had, you know, 15 minutes worth of tape. How did you keep tape going? Was it going from uh, one machine to another yeah, machine? We, 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 first of all, both real, okay, big real, 14 inch real. That's mean at uh, at 50 nips, Dolby SR was my favorite. It's close to a one hour. That's mean you could change the right. encore. Okay, but I never stopped both machines. I would start one machine five minutes before the other machine. They basically, like I run into a platoon now, you know. Can we get far yet, Anthony? Far yet? Far? Is the truck on? The air conditioning is on. You sure of that? You turn the brake on there? Todd, good. Oh, man. I, I don't have to, I, I won't have to come so early. <laughs> That's hey, what awesome. Kind of, what kind of power does the truck take? What kind of power oh. does the truck take? I said, I like to do this show. You know, <laughs> I like to do the music. 
Armin, uh, anyway, the, the immigration did let me in for a year, and that was tough. And finally, when I got the paper, I, I, somebody has heard about the truck through Journey or whatever. And Peter Frampton, I went at AM Record and did a mount with Peter Frampton and the total musician as well. We did something. And from one to the other, bad phone company, basically. Heard about, you know, Oriana List, you get the truck, you know, Claire Brother, whatever, they, I end up to do stuff. It's kind of word to mouth, a lot of it. I never advertise specially. And I always felt by working hard, it'll pay back, you know, be crazy a little bit, be detailed, just work with the people too. You're going to work with, not be an asshole. It counts for a lot. That's why, Butch, I like to work with you or you guys, because it's like, <laughs> Oh, oh, it's going to be great. It's easy, you know? Uh, well, yeah, I think it's, you know, a lot of that with attitude, you know, um, just us us communicating and being old friends helps, you know? We all oh, are, are there to make it, it better for the artist. Half of your, it's half of your job. Yeah. yeah. In a certain way, the connection, how you interact, and not feel ego, oh, 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 oh I, I did this, I did shit. And <laughs> basically, you know, I, you know, all the record I have on my wall, they look good. It took me, a, I, it took me a long time to say that ah, they just look good. And then peop, eventually the mobile will go away in a certain way. And I, I don't want to retire. I'm an old fart, but you know, I want to keep recording. I have a couple of ideas and keep involved and, you know, and people said, you don't realize how this it's important. Right, they look good, my wow. And then I have high school bring me kid, high tech high school, and with their parents. And it's funny, the parent, the mom, could I take a picture with you beside the Garbrook record or beside the Journey record? Or the, you know, it's like, it's like I'm not a star, but they want to see my face with that artist that I record. And then where I realized, you know what? They count. And they count and they don't count. You, you cannot say, I have all this, you know, for me, it's, I don't know, it's what it count is what I'm going to do today and try to do the best. So yes. Neil Giraffe, Neil Pabinetar, Neil told me, you are always good as your last record you done. And I always stick in my brain, you're always good at the last recording you done. If you screw it up, you never know, really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, the connection to awards are, you know, it's nice to have an accolade, right? It's nice to say, oh, oh someone yeah. thinks that this is great and it's sold a lot of records. Yeah, right. But when you have that connection to that artist and you created something that you're proud of, that's way more important than any accolade, right? No, you know, three quarter of the time I hate what I did. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, better. And people are like it. That's the important thing. It's not me to be always happy. It's to have my client, the artist, be really happy with what I did. That's important to me. Yes. You know? If they, and, and, and sometimes I mix stuff and I'm not really happy. But, you know, if you over mix, you kill it. You have to be careful. And then you listen. Someday that record come at the radio or TV or something. Oh. I don't remember the little percussion there. Oh, that sounds pretty good. And that was my mix, you know, because now you have a distance because you could overdo it. And it's that's the hardest thing to find the right spot when you mix or when you do something, you know. Same thing when I record to how much EQ I'm going to do or not EQ, you know, or whatever, you know. But one thing that's important is you can never do enough. Prepare, 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 prepare yourself, you know. And, and what is there, try to work with the people, not as an asshole, but as a nice person as possible. Now, some people will listen, he's such a, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure some people didn't like my funny accent or whatever it is. You know? <laughs> or I'm crazy. Yeah. Now, it's uh, I, many, many years when I think of what I sometimes listen back to old Genesis at the Savoy 1984 in the little club of secret show. It's so good. It was so good. I love to listen to that. The reason it really good and Phil Collins was the most funny guy between the audience, the, 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 the
and yell at each other. You know, it was fun shooting. I'm really not sure, like, it's great, you know. But you have some great musical show in the films. It's different, you know. I did a lot of jazz, and you have jazz festival. And the producer was telling me, oh, you rock and roll. It's the month for CBC in Canada, Montreal Jazz. Many years I was in Montreal, but even when I was in the state, I went back to Montreal to do the, the jazz. Oh, low battery mode, low power mode. Good. And uh, hold on, I'm going to see if I could plug uh, my. I get the far to plug. I might lose you. Anthony, could you look at back there? Might be uh, running low on power. Maybe. We're going to get him a uh, coat hanger and a foil hat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to open that compartment here. So that was not expected when you zoom. That was not that long. I feel this. There we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's thank you for this one. Oh, we lost him. <laughs> you lose him? Oh, yeah, yeah. we lost him. Well, anyway, we'll wait here a couple of minutes, see if yeah. he can get back to us. But, um, there he is. Wait. Oh, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I thought it was really interesting how he, you know, spoke about, there oh, go. there you are. We got you muted, though. Mute. Now there I you go. Now we got you. Is that the truck? Yeah. Some whole analog. Here's the fiber rack. Some regulator for equipment. No, uh, we can't. We can't see it. Oh, we see the bay door. Can't see it. Anyway. Uh, dang. Huh? Dang. I wanted to see that. <laughs> yeah. All we could see is the bay door. Yeah. All we saw was the bay door, and then it froze. But, uh, maybe if I open the door. But you know the best way: go at nomobile.com. You could do a full tour of the truck. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. But. Here, Anthony in the truck. Did we see Anthony then? Yes. That's awesome. Well, Guy, listen, man, I know that you're super busy, and the fact that you just gave us the time that you did is yeah. amazing. Um, you know, and we, we want to thank you so much, and we'll let you get back to work. And, and, I hope uh, you enjoy. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, if you have any questions, too, uh, I, I got to look at the YouTube, and uh, if you could always contact me. I always invite people to, except you have to use your mask. <laughs> and and uh, it, it was fun. I hope you enjoyed too. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. And and listen, we would love to have you back on on a day when you're not working, and we can we can get you, uh, you know, where you're not worried about what's going on around you. So, thank you so much for your time. You're, you're Thanks, welcome. Dude. We'll talk later on. And okay. Stay safe. Okay. All, All right, take care. Yep. Go back working more regularly. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank bye. You. All right, everybody. Bye. Thanks for tuning in, man. Um, you know, I just thought when he said that he had a gig, I just thought, you know, any time that we could get out of Guy Charbonneau would be worth it. And and I think yeah. it was, you know, um, I think, uh, the, you know, definitely some of the things that he said about relationships are, are really important. And uh, it's, it's how he climbed up the ladder and got to the point, you know, it wasn't so much that it was word of mouth um, about how good of an engineer it was. He was making relationships and you heard that where he pushed himself into putting himself into the right place at the right time. He it sounds like he's done that a bunch. Um, and so the, the Bruno from Studer, you know, was a manufacturer was, you know, half of his help getting, getting to where he's at with Bruno and then Phil Ramon jumping in there on the other side. So it wasn't just another engineer and stuff. It was a manufacturer. Bruno was Studer getting him the right equipment and, and then parlaying it from there.
Yeah, absolutely. Um, really great stuff. And and we are, you know, we're going to try to get him back on where we have a better internet connection and we can we can we grill him some more. Man. Uh, and talk about all yeah i mean he's a really he's a big car guy um yeah. he's a really really interesting guy and we've had great a great relationship over the past 30 years and and, and um, i think uh, one of the questions we had and I, i'd like to get at him at some point is you know how do you end up in carlsbad of all places from montreal <laughs> right i mean carlsbad gorgeous right great weather great everything but i think that's I wonder, it really. i wonder how he picked carlsbad of all places i'm not I know. sure well yeah if I could afford to live anywhere, I might think that yeah, Carl's Carlsbad would be. wouldn't be bad. <laughs> Even though the milk is $9 a gallon. Um, yeah. And those gas uh, anyway. cars has got to be expensive too. <laughs> it's got to be. I think, didn't he say the other day when he was filling up the truck, it was like $4 a gallon or something or four twenty. dollars Oh yeah, Diesel, he said it was yeah. over four. Yeah, that's oh, true. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, listen, Excellent. stay safe out there. Hey, um, we are dark for the next two weeks, guys. We're not going to have any um, wrong end of the snake next week or the following week. Um, join us on April 6th with all new guests. Um, we know you're going to love it. Uh, we're going to announce those over the next couple of weeks. Um, part of it is just that we're, we're getting so busy, which is great. Got um, shit going on. Yeah, I'm doing a Meyer immersive demo in um, Nashville on the 31st. If you're in Nashville, uh, go to Meyer.com. You can sign up for that. And I'm doing a, um, a really interesting demo with immersive audio. Uh, so come down and see me. Um, so, Where's but here, what's that? Where's it at? You didn't say where it's at. Oh, it's at Soundcheck. Um, but be? you have to you have to go to <laughs> Meyer.com and sign up for it. It's invite only um so all right guys well listen thank you for showing up and uh we'll, we'll see you got an extra minute we should thank kim at earthworks again right um absolutely for the microphones i'm sure they still got that sale going on with the extra stand and stuff at sweetwater right yep and um it's funny i have lots of people always ask me like what's your microphone man it always sounds great and it's like well it's this earthworks mic sounds yeah, fantastic you got that windscreen over it so they can't see it so i know i know but i'm promoting tater audio though i like that so. i guess i can see the little logo on the yeah on the clip yeah there we go yeah Awesome. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning in, guys. You know, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our videos. Uh, we're so grateful that you found us. Uh, tell all your friends. You know, we feel like we have a great thing here, and we hope you like it too. Give us some feedback in your, um, you know, comments. Uh, let us know if you if you want uh, particular guests. We we'd love to have some suggestions for guests. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you, and and subscribe and smash like in all of our videos. Um, and uh we will see you in a couple of weeks um <clears throat> i wasn't prepared here. i'm not prepared i wasn't prepared uh sorry guys here is your outro the merlus <laughs>